he should be worried about losing you. He should be thinking he has the greatest woman on the face of this earth. He should be feeling like, I never want to let this go. And he should be cherishing you, respecting you, and loving you in the way that you desire and deserve. So I want to help you experience that by giving you the nine ways to make him worry about losing you. My name is Stefan Labossier, a.k.a. Stefan Speaks. Back with another dating and relationship advice video for women. Again, today we're talking about the nine ways to make him worry about losing you. As always, before we begin, be sure to like this video, share it, subscribe to this channel, and click that notification button. And leave your comments below. Let me know what's the way you think uh, you can make a man worry about losing you. Now, listen, if you've been watching me for a while, then you know I'm not about tips and tricks that are manipulative acts to get the desires or to get our needs met. Um, though some of these things may sound that way, it's really about establishing good, healthy, positive relationships and then getting the positive results that come from that. All right. I also want you to understand that we don't want to make him worry in the sense of striking fear in his heart, all right, to where he's in panic mode or on edge or even feeling insecure about the possibility of losing you. No, but we do want him to see the value in the woman that you are, to understand that he has something special. But it's not just in him recognizing it through his own admission. It's also through you taking the steps I'm about to lay out that's going to ensure that he is going to worry or regret or be concerned about losing you. Now, I have a very important message at the end of this video, so please watch to the end because I always have something extra I gotta give you. Some of you are coming to this video for this information, but there's something else you need to hear, so be sure to stay tuned. But let's get to it. Number one on the list of ways to make him worry about losing you is to be his peace. Now, I know some of y'all already shaking your head like, give me a break. Why well, I got to be his peace? Why can't he be my peace? Listen, you came to find out how to make him worry about losing you. So, yes, you need to be his peace. Peace is something that men crave. And to be quite honest with you, a lot of men aren't getting it. A lot of men are in a relationship with a woman who may be a good woman, quote unquote. But that relationship is not filled with peace, not filled with joy. And so when there isn't peace, why would someone crave holding on to that? Why would someone be worried about losing that? If anything, they might be wondering, how the hell do I get out of this? Because nobody wants to come home to war. Nobody wants to deal with uh, their woman being difficult and negative and all these things that only create more problems. No man wants to have to embrace a negative woman. So when you can learn to be his peace, you strengthen the relationship. But listen, it's not just about being his peace. How about be your own damn peace? You need peace. You can't be his if you're not yours. You, you got to understand how this works. You, you can't fake manufacture being this peaceful woman who brings joy and love when from within you are battling your own demons. You are going through your own issues. So please understand because again, like I said, this isn't just about tips and tricks. This is about healthy things that are going to create healthy relationships and that starts within you. So make sure if you need to go to counseling, go to counseling. Uh, if you need to uh, resolve some things within you that's throwing things off, which I'll mention later about the things that we eat, how we are sleep, things of that nature that can really sway us in the right or wrong direction, look at all of these things. Start to create that peace and joy within yourself so that it naturally comes out. So you won't find yourself trying to force yourself to put a smile on your face when you're not feeling that way. Now, some of you might be saying, how the hell am I going to be his peace when he brings me chaos, when he brings me nonsense, when he's the one causing problems? Well, again, I got an answer for that at the very end of this video because there's a really simple answer. But again, we're going to leave that to the end of the video. Back to being his peace. At the end of the day, I can tell you from sitting down with so many men, and, and let me just give this important part because I'm very big on connection, all right? And 
one of the things that I've seen with men who felt like they had a connection with a woman is that they all mentioned that they felt peace in her presence. So I'm only bringing that up simply because you can't force a connection. You can't just manufacture one. But the bottom line is, I want you to understand how peace is a part of the equation for a man to even feel like, damn, this is the one. This is the one I cannot let go. So if you want him to worry about losing you, find a way to be his peace. But again, be your own peace as well. Number two on the list that pretty much goes hand in hand with be his peace is speak love and positivity into that man. Now listen, even though I have a video about not dating mama's boys, right? <laughs> I, I, I want you to understand that the reason why some men, not all men, but the reason why some men become mama's boys, become so attached to their mothers is because she is that peace. She is speaking that love and positivity. She is the encourager. She believes in him. She uplifts him. These things draw that man to his mother and they can draw him to you. When you become the source of positivity and love, he wants to be around you. When he has to go to work and deal with the nonsense of work, but he knows he has a woman that when he's in her presence only speaks love and positivity into him, he wants to be there. He doesn't want to be out and about when he can be relaxed next to the woman that makes him feel good. So learning how to speak love and positivity into that man, learning how when you guys are discussing things, not to go to the negative, not to always sound so pessimistic. It doesn't mean that you cannot be honest about how you feel. And sometimes your honest feelings may come across as negative or pessimistic. But again, it's not how you, it's not what you say, but how you say it. And learning how to convey your message in a more loving, peaceful, feminine manner is going to go a long way. And again, it, it causes you to be the person that he wants to be around, that he wants to talk to, that he cherishes. Now, as I mentioned in, in number one, it's easier to be positive and loving when you're at peace from within, when you're doing the things for you to feel better about yourself, to feel good, to have the energy that you need. So you do have to make sure that you are locating the negative influences in your life that throw you off from staying in that more positive and loving mindset. What is causing you to struggle if it is a struggle for you to do these things? If right now you're sucking your teeth or rejecting this idea of speaking love and positivity, why? Why, why are you so more inclined to think this is unrealistic and to think that being more negative or whatever we want to call it it is what it should be or, or how it should be accepted. The reality is that you can achieve being a more positive, loving person, but you have blockage there. There's something that we have to remove. It may be trauma from childhood. Uh, it, it may be that you're not prepared to be fully vulnerable. And the reality is that being positive and loving requires a level of vulnerability. And because you struggle in that manner, you may tend to reject such ideas as this. But you have it in you. I want you to know that. You have it in you. You are capable. And again, understand that becoming that positive, loving person is not, it's not only going to make him worry about losing you. It has a positive effect on everyone in your life. Because again, the same woman who may struggle in her relationships sees struggle in other areas, see conflict in other areas, because that negative energy carries over into other areas of our life. So when we can learn to create more positive environments, whether that be at work, our relationships with family, that tends to have the reverse effect. And now the positivity starts to spread. So we have to turn the tables in every area that we can to make sure we're walking in more love and positivity. But without a doubt, when you are that woman, he will be concerned about losing you. He will be worried about losing you. He will want to make sure he holds on to this because I'm telling you right now, Y'all see a world, and many of you say there's so many good women, but there's not a lot of positive women. There's not a lot of sweet, loving women. Not like you think it is. Not when it comes to being in a relationship. Some of these women may act all sweet and loving on the surface, but behind closed doors with that man, they are hell. They are trouble. It is not what you think it is. I said that all wrong. It's not what you think it is, okay? 
So please understand that when you can bottle that up and become that positive, loving woman, that's a, that's a powerful force. And that's something that he will regret or he will worry about losing. Number three on the list is you're going to find out his specific needs and desires and then actually implement these things or actually provide these things. Now, here's something that's very important. One I have to mention, if you notice on this list, none of this stuff is like we're, we're going to nag him into doing what you want or we're going to take some negative approach. Everything here is positive, healthy energy to get you what you're looking for. So now, going back to finding out his needs and desires, one of the greatest mistakes of women is that they assume what this man wants. They assume, well, if I, this is what I've been taught to believe should make him happy rather than learning what actually makes him happy. So they do things based off their own logic or their own assumptions and they don't realize it doesn't always connect with what that man was looking for. It's almost like you're with this man and you say, what would you love for your birthday? And he says, you know what? I would just love um, a box of pizza, some liquor, me and you watching a movie, and we have some sex. I'm just throwing that in there because some that's what some guys would say. All right? Now, you hear this, and you say, you know what? He needs a new wallet. <laughs> Let me go get him a wallet. No pizza, no liquor, no sex, no nothing. Just the damn wallet. And in your mind, you're thinking he should be so happy because he needed this wallet. But in his mind, it's like, I, I asked for those things. That's what I, yeah, I appreciate that you're so thoughtful that you, you, that you recognize I needed this and this is a useful gift, but there was a different need that I wanted to be met and you ignore that. And, and I give you just a like, simple example, but this happens in so many ways with women where what he's actually desiring is not connecting with what you're trying to pour into. So when you take the time to find out his needs and desires specifically to him, and then you pour into that, oh my gosh, you immediately become a woman like no other because the average woman does not do that. The average woman does not take the time to find out. The average woman does not actually pour into those specific things. Now, let me throw a caveat. It is possible that what he needs or desires may be beyond your, your value system, all right? They may cross the line that you are not comfortable with. I'm not going to tell you to compromise your beliefs or your values to satisfy any man. So that is where, okay, well, maybe this is an indicator that we're in the wrong relationship, that we, we see things differently because now you will be able to see clearly you are unwilling or, un, or not capable of fulfilling his specific desires. And you can't just sweep it under the rug and say, well, he just has to deal with it because anything that's left as a void leaves the door open for someone else to fill it. Not saying that's okay, not validating it, not saying it's right. I'm telling you, this is what happens. So if you notice that this is a void you can't fill, then maybe this is an indicator, unless it's something super simple that he generally feels like it's not that big of a deal. Uh, other than that, then that may tell you, okay, we got to just keep it moving and, and move in a different direction. But to get back to the main point, find out what he needs specifically, find out what he desires, tap into that. And when you do, and not just tap into it once, not just tap into it for his birthday, no, consistently. The same way you don't want a man only doing the things you really like when it's a special occasion. You want him to take initiative to do that on regular days too. It shouldn't just be when it's a special day to get these things that you really, really want. So it's the same thing for him. Be consistent with those things. Keep pouring into it. And I'm telling you, when that happens, this man is not going to want to lose you. Plain and simple. Which brings me to number four. Start taking better care of yourself. Now, this one encompasses so many different angles here, all right? So one, let's start with what we kind of touched on in some of the earlier keys. As I said, it is very difficult to be positive, loving, to be his peace, uh, and all these different things when you're not feeling good within yourself, when you're cranky, when you're lacking energy. So... Taking better care of yourself, phase one, 
is simply about getting yourself into a better place mentally, spiritually, emotionally, all right? Because that is what's going to give you or the strength to, to be able to pour that positive, positive energy and love. That's what's going to help you have a better mood because people don't realize what you eat can affect your moods. Your lack of sleep can affect your energy. Your lack of drinking water. These are very simple things. Start taking better care of yourself. Taking a break from all that life is throwing at you. So many of you literally have no days off throughout the week. You have work, you may have school, you may have kids, your relationship, but you have not one day to just relax and recharge. This is important for you to have because again, it's not just important for the sake of your own health, but this is what's going to allow you to bring your best self to the relationship, which then by bringing your best self makes him uh, desire you more, makes him appreciate you more, makes him want to hold on to you more, plain and simple. So many people are bringing their lower level self. So many people are bringing their depleted self to the relationship and saying, hey, deal with it. Hey, you make me feel better. Hey, you figure this out. No, you figure it out. You get yourself right. Bring your better self to your partner and watch the difference that that makes. Yes, they still have to pour into you. They still are a contributor to the, the overall positivity and happiness of the relationship. But you've got to come with that great energy on your own to start with. So start taking better care of yourself health-wise so you can start feeling better and pouring these positive things into your relationship. But now here's the other angle of this. Take better care of yourself as far as your appearance. Now, some of y'all may not like that and, and you might, you know, be getting a little tight right now. But listen, hear me out. Again, I know we've all heard it. You've all heard it. Men being very visual. But notice something, I did not say, or I will not say to you, look a certain way, because different men like different things, all right? And so when I say take better care of yourself physically, first, let's recognize what was that presentation that draw him in? What's that presentation that he likes? Because for some of you, for some of you, you're, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to say to everyone, oh, you need to get really slim, right? Because... For in some of your relationships, that man may be wishing you gained five extra pounds. In another relationship, it may be losing 10 pounds, all right? Now, listen, I know some of you may be saying, well, I shouldn't have to do that for any man. Listen, if, if you want him to, to, if you want to tap into that thing that makes this man happy and raises his desire for you and then creates that, that environment where he is trying to hold on to you and he will now do what he's supposed to do even more, to make sure he does not lose this amazing great thing he has, then yes, physical attraction will play a role. Because we don't get into romantic relationships to not have physical attraction. This is where we're supposed to be able to enjoy the dynamic of physical attraction. Now, granted, he needs to do his part too, but this ain't about him right now. This is about what you can do better. So you have to find that, that what I call or like to call the happy zone. That place where you feel good about you, you're, you're comfortable. We don't want you to do anything that's going to uh, be unhealthy trying to look good for him, all right? We also don't want you to do anything unhealthy that takes you too far and deviates from what looks good to him. We want you to find that nice place where, okay, your man loves how you're looking, you love how you're looking, you love how you're feeling, it's all coming together. And again, it's going to vary from person to person. So I'm just going to say find your best self. Find your most effective presentation in that relationship within the dynamic of also it being healthy, all right? At least some level of healthy. Um, this is where you're going to strike gold, so to speak, all right? And this is where it's going to have a very strong impact on the relationship, plain and simple. So be very mindful of that, but definitely... Being in shape, and when I say in shape, because understand, we can be different weights and still be in shape, all right? Being in shape or being fit is kind of universal in the sense that you, you still want to be able 
to handle things in physical fitness. So I think it's good to strive for that regardless of whatever weight you settle in on. That's going to be good. Again, it's going to be good for you, how you feel, the impact on the relationship, your ability to have a greater energy, greater focus. All these things come together and create an amazing environment and an amazing relationship. So yes, start taking better care of yourself if you want him to worry about losing you. Next on the list is learn how to listen to this man. And not just that, I have to add this in and learn how to use some logic. Now, listen, don't be offended by that. Hear, hear what I'm saying, okay? I think one of the greatest complaints I hear from men, okay, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Listen, be transparent, use some logic. Now, here we go. Let's take it from there. One of the biggest complaints I hear from men is a lack of transparency from the woman. It's this, uh, this, this situation where it's like you're expecting him to read your mind. You're expecting him to understand without you clearly breaking things down for him. That can be very frustrating. That can be very annoying, which now robs the peace out of the relationship, can create negative energy in the relationship. Do you see how now it pours over into the, the things that we're trying to avoid? All right? Now, granted... A man should learn to be in tune with his partner and learn how to read things without her having to say every last word all the time. But if you're trying to do your part in creating a better relationship and making him desire you even more, then yes, being more transparent is going to be a huge deal. So one, speaking your mind and again, expressing yourself in a calm, loving manner because not what you say is how you say it. Also being able to listen to him. So kind of going back to that point of learning his needs. He say he, he wants the pizza and the liquor. Don't go, don't go do something else. Okay. Get him what he says. Listen, hear him, understand him. All right. And I think one of the biggest struggles that women have is that when you, when you become so used to dealing with bad men, with liars and manipulators, you assume everything coming out of a man's mouth is trying to throw you off the track or it's a lie or it's something not what he's saying. And you've got to understand, if you believe this is a good man, and I would assume that if you're trying to make him worry about losing you, you've deemed this man worthy of holding on to in your eyes, whether you're right or wrong, that's what you're perceiving it as, then be transparent. Be willing to listen, all right? And when I threw the part in there about using logic, don't get me wrong. I want you to be who you are. And as women, there's going to be, there is more of an emotional wiring that goes on within you. And that's fine. I don't necessarily want you to reject that. But I do want you to become emotionally mature enough to not allow emotions to run you, to not allow the emotions to throw you off in moments where simple logic would have saved the day. All right. Would have made things very simple and easy. And again, when you're dealing with a man, he understands, or it's easier for him to understand the logic than it is the emotions. And so there has to be a balance there so that you guys can be on the same page, you guys can understand each other. Again, I'm not going to remove all responsibility for men to be better in tune with the woman's emotions, but I do want to encourage the woman to add more logic and to take a step back. Don't just react off of how you're feeling all the time. Think, breathe. Pray, you know what I'm saying? Then make your next move. Then say what you need to say. Then do what you need to do. This will, again, also help to avoid a lot of chaotic situations because a lot of things go left when people react off emotions, men or women. When people don't take time to think, process, pray, and they just react emotionally, things can go left very fast and people jump way too far ahead of themselves and get themselves in more trouble than, than was necessary. So learn how to it, it, use more logic in the relationship, which will, again, I believe, create better peace, better balance, and again, make him uh, much more appreciative of the woman he has in front of him. Number six on this list, and I know this video has been going on for a lot longer than I planned, but stay with me because, again, I got an important message at the end you need to hear. So we're going to try to speed up these last few, all right? Create your own world within the relationship. Now, here's what I mean by that. As a woman, it, if your whole world is your man, that can become a problem, all right? 
you could end up smothering him. Um, you could end up becoming... I don't even want to say the word clingy because I do believe that when two people are madly in love, they don't necessarily view it as clingy, but you can become overly needy. You, you can become draining at some point because you don't know how to have a world outside of him. I once had a client who said she could not be anywhere her man wasn't simply because she was too bored by herself. She, she was, if, she, if he left the house, she would start calling his phone, not because she was worried about what he was doing or anything like that. She just did not know how to operate outside of her man. And so that can wear down a guy. That can become a problem. Like he may love you and he loves your attention and he loves your desire of him. But damn, <laughs> like there, there comes a point where I need you. Go get some friends. Uh, go, go do a hobby. Uh, volunteer somewhere. Create a world for yourself. Now, again, I think it's a world that you should be able to, if, if at any moment there's a desire for it, share with your partner. So I don't want you to create some secret world that you keep separate from your guy. What I'm saying is make sure you are still enjoying you. Make sure you're still exploring the world in different ways. Again, for some of you, that might be a part-time job or that might be at your job. It might be that hobby. It might be that volunteer work. It might be a new group of friends. It might be starting some new hobbies and pastimes, whatever. And the, the great thing about this, of creating your own world is when now you have this balance of, I know how to have fun with or without him, your level of positive energy and love rises more consistently. All right, because now even when you're not with him, you're doing things you enjoy. And now when you reconnect with him, you're bringing all that fun and positive energy and excitement you just experienced. And now you can share it with him. Now you guys have more things to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like it really helps to strengthen and grow the relationship when two people can have worlds they can share together and that they can pull happiness and joy from different areas of life, not just putting that all that responsibility on their partner. So creating your own world, enjoying yourself, I'm telling you, it's going to have a very great and positive impact on the relationship and it will make him cherish and, and love you even more. Number seven is learn how to balance the relationship. So we're going to make this one really quick. Here's the thing. In a fight for equality in a relationship, we've lost what I believe is the true essence, and that's balance, all right? And when you really examine six long, successful relationships, and successful is not simply two people staying together. We're talking about two people who happily stayed together, two people who enjoyed each other, who wouldn't trade each other for the world, all right? What you find is balance. You find two people working together as a team, learning how to balance each other out. It isn't what we have to do 50% of the chores here and you do 50%. It isn't everything has to be split down. No, it's just, okay, I'm going to handle this. You're going to handle that. Where I'm weak, you find strength. You, you become strong and handle that. Where you're weak, I am your strength. We now counter the things that we struggle with and we become this full unit that together we can conquer the world. When you identify and create that balance, you become a much more valued asset in a relationship. Because if you're simply bringing to the table everything he brings to the table, it, 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 it creates this world of, okay, well now, now I still need to find other things to fill in the blanks to be able to handle these things. But when you can be the person that, okay, uh, I'm just using this as an example. If, if I am not great at managing things, all right, but you are awesome at managing stuff, now we're going to have a great balance where I can say, okay, I can rely on my partner to know how to run this stuff because I'm the doer, she's the manager. And now we have this balance that we create. If we're both managers, we may actually end up butting heads. If we're both doers, we don't know any, we don't have anyone to manage the situation. And again, I'm just giving us an example, but the point is identifying where you can pick up and create balance in that relationships in that relationship makes you extremely valuable and makes you a woman he will be worried about losing because now you become such a strong necessity. You become like, yo, like I, I think about it. When you balance someone out for them to lose that, that's, that, that's going to hurt. That's going to be huge. So now again, we don't want to scare people into losing you, but 
at the same time, that is going to be like, man, I can't afford to lose someone who has brought so much balance to my life. So locate where you can create that balance and, and, and dr build on that. And that is going to be very, very powerful thing in the relationship. All right. Number eight. And you know what? Because like I said, this video has been going for a minute and I still got that special message you need to hear. I'm going to tie number eight and nine together. All right. Number eight was give consequences and rewards. Number nine is be willing to walk away. So those th two things kind of go hand in hand because the be willing to walk away is part of giving consequences. Here's the thing. Again, though, that, though the, 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 the focal point here is not to create fear in someone in order to, to make them worry about losing you, they do have to respect and understand that if they're not going to do their part, they don't get to reap the benefits of you. Everything in life has consequences. You don't go to work, you can get fired. You don't pay your mortgage, you can lose your house. We can go on and on and on. Everything has consequences, yet society, or there are many people in society who want to create relationships where you need to tolerate whatever BS and never walk away. And the thing is, if someone feels like no matter what they do, no matter what negativity they bring, you will never leave them, you've already lost the relationship. Because it is almost human nature to start to, to slack off, to start to take advantage of the fact that you know you will not be held accountable for your bad actions. Because the reality is that, yes, there's some days you may not feel like doing certain things, or you may not have the full strength for it, but when you know this is necessary for your relationship, and when you know if you don't keep doing your part, you can lose this amazing partner, you find that strength to do what you need to do. But when, again, there's no consequences, ah, oh, well, no big deal. This doesn't need to happen today. Oh, no big deal. She could suck it up. No big deal. He could deal with this. No. So when I say there has to be consequences, meaning, listen, I, 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 I want you to establish in a relationship where he understands. He does his part, he will get the best of you. He will get everything he dreamed of and more. But if he doesn't, he can lose it. If he doesn't, he will not get all those things in return. It is a reward system. It is a give and take. Again, please separate love and relationships because you can love someone. You can love them no matter who, what they look like, no matter what they do. But in order to have a successful romantic relationship, there are conditions. There are standards and requirements that have to be met. And if he is unwilling to meet them, then he has to know that, yes, he can lose this woman. He can lose you. So once you've established that and you show him that you're serious, you can't say to a man, if you do this, I will leave you. Then he does it and you don't leave. You shot yourself in the foot. Even if you plan to one day come back, you better hold true to your word or don't even say things you can't back up. Because all you're going to do is make yourself look bad. But bottom line, and, and I... I feel like we gotta, we gotta have a whole video just for this, just for the establishing this kind of dynamic and being willing to walk away. But the bottom line is he must know that in order to keep you, he has to do his part. And when you, when that's established, yes, now he will know there will be that worry of losing you if he's not holding up his end of the bargain. And that's a healthy and good thing. Trust me. So now, I told y'all at the end I had an answer to it. What if he's the one bringing you to chaos? What if he's the one causing all these problems? So you've come to this video trying to find out how to make him worry about losing you. But I'm here to tell you maybe you're best losing him. Maybe you're best not having this man in your life. Listen, I want you to implement all these positive, loving, healthy things in your relationship. But please understand that, yes, if you're with the wrong man, you're with the wrong man. And if anything... Taking these steps will magnify even more whether he's right for you or not. Because if you do all the stuff on this list and he's still not acting right, there's nothing else to discuss. There's nothing else to explore. There's no more other videos to look at other than how do I let him go? Or, or, or when it's time to walk away? Because now it's time. Now you need to recognize this guy's not it because you gave him your best and he still fell short. But if he's for you, if he's serious about you, if he's at least truly invested in the relationship and you do all this, 
he will step up. He will step up. He may be even go above and beyond because there's no way a genuine loving man can receive all this goodness and still act a fool. It don't happen like that. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. You've already said it to him. You've already shouted it from the rooftops and he still has changed nothing. Why are you still there? And when you do, you will get what's best for you and you will have healthier relationships and greater success.